Hey, welcome back to the garage. This is Torino. If you're a, a new subscriber, you might know that uh, we do more than just the construction. Uh, I do motorcycles, uh, welding, fabrication, basically any kind of repairs that I think I can handle. So there will be more construction videos coming. But in between all that, I have to maintain the garage here. And one thing that just came up recently are my overhead lights here in the garage. I had it initially ordered a 150 watt uh, overhead uh, high bay lights. And as, as normally with these LED high wattage bulbs, the main enemy of these things is heat. And uh, these were what I thought were high, higher end fixtures. And what I mean by higher end is that they have the required heat sinks to dissipate all that heat. Uh, come to find out, one of my high bay lights had failed and I sent it in for repair. It came back. I had to pay postage both ways. And I'd say maybe about another hundred hours of usage it failed again so I'm not going to go through that anymore um, I've done some of this before and I know the enemy is the heat so and in, in, in addition to the one that failed another one right here this one failed on me what they'll do is start to blink and then after a couple days of blinking off and on, they'll, they'll just die completely. I purchased some 100 watt uh, Cobb LEDs, chip on board LED uh, cubes, and I'm going to replace the 150 watt circular LED with a 100 watt chip on board light. I'm going to see if that works, and uh, if not, I'm going to see about adding uh, some additional aluminum heat sinks, but uh, I'm going to try try it without additional heat sinks and just lower the wattage first. So let's get to it. All right, so here's the plan today. This is my high bay light, and I mean it is a quality light. It does have some heat sink and, and cooling fins on it. But uh, obviously not enough for 150 watts. What I'm going to do here is I, I purchased these 100 watt LED chips and I think that'll be a good replacement. And um, importantly, I also have some thermal compound. This is also known as um, Arctic Silver used anywhere where you need to mount uh, a, a high heat high heat device to a heat sink such as in a computer to help transfer that that heat away from your chip or your fan or your cpu into a heat sink and then i've got my soldering tools ready and the plan is to remove the existing one if you can see where these these wires here is where they actually did a repair on this and I was paying postage both ways to just to have them solder on a new chip so I asked them I says you know it's because it's under warranty why don't you just you know let me let me uh, buy the chip or send me the chip and I'll do the soldering but they, oh, we don't do that. So, okay, that's fine. You won't get any more of my business. But, uh, so my plan is just to disassemble this light and um, experiment how I want to replace this chip with uh, the 100 watt. So let's give it a try.
at least they did use some type of conductive material. I don't know if it's Arctic silver. All right, let's see if I can get these connections off without ruining too much stuff. It does seem adequate. The aluminum heat sink has a lot of fins on it. And the base plate here where the where the chip was mounted seems to be able to transfer heat you know, pretty easily through there. So I'm not sure what the problem was. I want to see if I can get some more play with this. cord here. All right, welcome back. It is the next day. Had some uh, some changes and some issues come up with troubleshooting the light. And I'll show you what we got going on. All right. I took the light fixture apart to just take a look at the heat sink. This is the, the actual heat sink. And inside of here, there's, there's two copper, um, this kind of a U-shaped things that fit in these two slots. Then the rest of this is aluminum. But what I was wondering also is this whole area here is painted and here here's the bottom of the copper inserts which I assume you know copper being probably being more conductive than aluminum that's why they put those here to, to pull the heat out and transfer it into the, the body here and then the fins but I'm not sure that painting it was a good idea but maybe somebody can chime in on that. I think I might strip this paint off and uh, so we just have better contact between the LED chip via the Arctic Silver and to the aluminum and the copper. So that's one item that I found that I think can be improved. But the other, the other issue that I had I, I uh, temporarily uh, installed my new chip and it, it wouldn't light. Then I, um, so I went down the street and we've got a little electronics guy down the street that has a little fix it shop. And he has a LED um, diagnostic tool. So he came over and he checked the original light, the big one and it's fine so that that took us down the road to checking the um, the driver the LED driver that's situated in the top here it hangs from here and then the driver is inside but because they market this light as indoor outdoor this was completely filled with um, silicone. silicone and uh, so that contributes to the heat so I've, I've never seen a, a driver fail from heat but obviously this this one did so he replaced something in here and it's working now so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to reinstall any silicone and in fact because it hangs like this, I might drill some cooling holes. I might drill some cooling holes in the top to let some of that heat escape from the driver area. So what I think I'm gonna do now is, is clean up the original chip, clean all that old conductive grease off, 
and then I'm going to strip the paint off of the heat sink. Then uh, reinstall everything and resolder the connection and see what happens with it. Now you can see the, the copper uh, inserts here. I line it up right because here's the wire management hole. All right, I've got the uh, LED chip back on the heat sink. We'll set that aside. What I was thinking about doing now is, since this encapsulates the electronics in here for the driver, I was thinking about drilling a couple um, exhaust holes here to get some of that heat out from the driver. And uh, again, this was marketed as a uh, indoor outdoor. So that's why there was a lot of silicone in there. But since it's not gonna be outside, I don't think it, uh, a couple holes in here will hurt anything other than some dust. But I'll give it a try. See how much heat comes out of there. And there was a bunch more silicone, you know, underneath the driver board that I wanted to take out. Well, I had to take out. So that's what my version of an exhaust port <laughs> for the driver is. So everything in this garage is an experiment, just so you know. It doesn't work, I buy a new light. Just go ahead and put everything back together and then run my wire through the heat sink and then solder it up. <laughs> 